All right, here we have version two of the seven segment digit. Previously, version one, seen right here, video posted back in January 2023, check that out. But in this video, I'm gonna go over the internals of um, this new version, as well as how to assemble your own from the STL file link in the description. So for the tutorial, I'm gonna use the blue one as the example. All right, before I jump into the assembly process, I'll do a quick overview. Uh, this is the new version two, seven segment digit. Um, the depth is exactly 25 millimeters or about an inch. Uh, cycling through the numbers here, it has a very satisfying, much more satisfying click uh, than the previous version. All right, here's all the components laid out. In total, there are 35 3D printed parts along with four screws and two rubber bands. So quick overview here on the segments. Uh, this will also be the first step of assembly. There are a total of four types of segments, as you can see here at the bottom. This is the D segment. This is going to be one that uh, is only quantity one. Um, also, it has the cam follower built into it right there. You can see the curve profile, whereas the other three that have quantity two each in total have their own uh, separate uh, cam follower that will need to be attached. So, uh, as you can see here, the three different types, uh, C, B, and A, those letters are part of the file that will be printed into it if you look closely. And then likewise, each one of these is going to be labeled A, B, or C, and that will tell you which one uh, connects to which cam and follower. So first, um, I like to dry fit these, remove any burrs um, from the print, because you want this to be as tight as you can. Um, Ultimately, the goal is when you connect these, you want the surface of the segment to be parallel with the surface there of that top side of the follower. Um, so that's a decent fit, how these went together, um, but it's not super tight. So what I like to do is I will use a little super glue. And I'll go ahead and drop some glue down at the end or where the top of the shaft will make contact and then slide these together and making sure those look as parallel as possible. It looks pretty good. Um, also just make sure the bottom of that follower sits on top of that little extrusion right there. Glue all these together. Uh, I'll next bring in the seg plate. So the seg plate or segment plate is the um, basically the guide where all of these segments will uh, be supported and slide. So each one of these cutouts is a path for the sliding action of all these segments and then including that center one segment D right there. So what you do, um, you'll see there's text on here um, labeling each of the uh, segments. So C's top and bottom. So here's a C right here. So basically you'll just drop that in. Um, do a test real quick. Make sure that free falls. Uh, if there's any binding, that will cause some issues of operation. Um, so you want that to free fall. One little trick, if I don't have uh, a good slide there, I'll take an emery board. These are pretty much useful for any any 3D printed parts. Um, and you can remove any burrs or slightly open that up a bit if you need to. So um, I'll slide all these on. Just keep in mind the two extensions here, these two extrusions have those pointing up in the same direction that the cam followers are. So slide all these on. The D segment, that doesn't go in yet. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so once you have all those in, then we'll grab a rubber band. And I'll just wrap it around all of the followers and segments. And make sure it's not too low so it doesn't get trapped between the, the um, seg plate and the... Uh, so just give each one a test. Make sure it moves freely. All right. So uh, the next step will be to bring in the body 
Uh, the top side will be where that little cutout is. And then take your D segment, drop that in right over top of where it's going to be. So that when you lay this on there, that slot will line up. And then just go ahead and drop that in there. Make sure it's pressed down all the way. Make sure that segment free falls. And then, so here are the cams. They're basically two sets or two stacks as I'll call them um, here in each of these columns. Um, down here at the bottom, we'll start with the uh, D cams. This one is really more of a cam than this one. As you can see, this one doesn't have any profile or any um, changing profile because this is acts more just as a support for these upper three. Whereas this one here, this does have a profile and this is the one that controls that center segment or D segment. So this is gonna be the D cam. Next row, we have C, B, and A. All of these stack on top of the base or the number D cams in that order. Um, also, there is a cutout on each one of these that corresponds to a key. You can get the light to show that, there you go. Uh, a key on uh, these two stacks. So pretty simple, just drop it on with that key lined up. All right, stack number one, moving on to number two. All right, so those are put together. Once the stacks are completely assembled, we can bring back in the body that we put together previously. Um, and then now it's time to drop these, drop these in there. So on the bottoms of each of these stacks, you'll see there's a uh, little cutout right there. That is gonna go on here and here. Now for the bottom one, you might have to push two of the followers out of the way. And then one of the tricks with how to how to get this in its default or zero position is that both of the keys will be pointed towards each other. So this bottom one's already pointed up, and these also only rotate counterclockwise, or at least how that's the that's how the cam profiles were designed um, for these to rotate in the counterclockwise direction when you have it open and looking at it from the backside like this. So now both both the keys are pointing towards each other. One little trick here at this stage: each one of these shafts has a little slot um, that I've put in there for a flathead screwdriver. What I like to do is just give these a test to make sure that they operate smoothly after everything's been assembled. Same thing on the top here. Okay, that seems to work smoothly. The next components uh, we'll put in are these uh, timing gears or sinking gears. The purpose of these is to keep both the top and the bottom stacks timed with each other so they don't get out of sync. So starting with these two, uh, the two that have the extrusion sleeves, those will drop with extrusion side down on top of those two uh, little shafts on the seg plate. And then these will go on the stacks. Notice they have a cutout also. Uh, just drop those on. Make sure it's still lined up. All right, looks good. The next piece will be the mid plate. So this mid plate will house the everything we've put together so far, and then um, also support the, the next mechanisms that have to do with the ratcheting action. So to install this, just drop that on. All right, that falls right into place. We'll go ahead and bring in the next two steps of uh, components. So we've got the springs and the spring drums. So together these work with the mid plate here uh, to achieve the, ra the ratcheting mechanism. So uh, the springs are dual action. There's two sets of springs on this. There's these outer arms here and then the inner ones. The inner ones work with these teeth um, there around the shaft on the mid plate. And then these outer ones work with the uh, teeth here on the inside of the drum. So the teeth here and there 
act opposite of each other. So to drop these in, and then the drums go on top with the uh, with the arm right there going to the left. You'll see there's a cutout also for that path for travel. So I start that in the down position and then just lock it up to its uh, default or retracted position. Here we have the push action and push button. So to connect these two, look for the little nub here at the top of the push action. And then with the word push on the push button, facing in the same direction as this, slide that into the slot, and then snap those two together. All right, we're almost to the end here. The next component I'll bring in. So this has two arms here with these extrusions. Those will fall into the uh, two slots right there. And then we have another one that's all by itself over here, and that'll be... Uh, used to support a rubber band. So let me show you that. So so this goes around that top screw shaft or standoff. Pull that down, pull the rubber band down a little bit. So with the extrusion uh, side down, slide that onto the top here. And then once you get that into place, you can just let go of the rubber band that's now holding it into place. So back plate right here, final step, it just falls right into place there. So the screws four total at three quarter inch long, number eight wood screws. And just snug those down. Of course, not too tight. We're screwing into plastic here. And that's that, let's test it. success. All right, that looks good. So I'd like to share a few tips and tricks I've used to help make this seven segment digit successful. I hope you can find some value in this information. And as always, also, if there's any suggestions you have, please feel free to share. I'm all ears. So first I'll make a quick recommendation of the colors on various components. This is probably obvious, but the color of the body should closely match the color of the seg plate since you can see it when a particular segment is out of the way or not showing. Similarly, the color of the cams and followers could also benefit from being the same color as the body because when a segment is hidden, the cams and followers can be seen with some numbers through the cam guides back there. At the very least, as long as they have a similar shade, like in this example, uh, with the navy body and the black cams, they're both dark colors. It works pretty well. The black basically is back in the shadows, so, you know, it's not really too visible with this particular uh, color scheme. Here are a few critical areas where removing burrs via file can significantly improve performance if it's necessary. So like mentioned earlier in the video, the cam guides in the seg plate may need attention depending on if there isn't free movement. Alternatively, you could remedy this by adjusting the scale of the segment components in your slicing program to create more or less clearance as desired. I would say a small scale adjustment of roughly one or 2% shouldn't affect the operation. The next place that seems to be a potential spot for complication is between the cams 
when they're stacked. So for example, if a burr or a piece of debris exists on the top of this one, and you go to stack this one on top, of course they won't seat completely together, and that can cause an issue. The next bullet point of area to check for burrs is here on the spring drum. Pretty much every time I print these, there's always a burr or two somewhere between the teeth points here. And what that does is that can cause the arm of the spring to ride on that and potentially not lock into place, or it creates a little bit of a resistance in the down motion. So checking in here for burrs uh, and removing debris um, can significantly uh, improve the feel when you push the plunger. Well, that's all I have for now. Much more future content to come though. Thanks for checking out this video. And regardless of what they say, don't be afraid to reinvent the wheel.